on the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Thank you for joining us today for our celebration of the Holy Eucharist and a special warm welcome to any new parishioners. We wish to gratefully acknowledge and thank all our dedicated volunteers without whom this Mass and the live streaming of this Mass would not be possible. Please rise. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Caesar, Ber Caesar Bernardo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our celebration on this, the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Special welcome to those who may be visiting or here for the first time. Before we begin, as always, let us pause for a moment of silence, call to mind our sins, and ask for the Lord's pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray.
Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with, our, with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Anger and wrath, these are abominations, yet a sinner holds on to them. The vengeful person will face the Lord's vengeance, for he keeps a strict account of their sins. Forgive your neighbor the wrong that is done, and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. Does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? If one has no mercy towards another like oneself, can one then seek pardon for one's own sins? If one who is but flesh harbors wrath, who will make an atoning sacrifice for that person's sins? Remember the end of your life and set enmity aside. Remember corruption and death and be true to the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not be angry with your neighbor. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook false. The word of the Lord.
transgressions from us. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive my brother or sister if they sin against me? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. The Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But, the, but that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into the prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. With these, with these words from today's gospel, our Lord urges us to imitate God in the act of forgiving others. Because just as our Heavenly Father never fails to offer forgiveness to those who seek it, we are called to do likewise. But with these words, our Lord also gives us the greatest challenge that there is in this life, to truly forgive those who have hurt us and wronged us. Because, of, because whether one is a Christian or not, Forgiveness is the most difficult thing to do in this life. 
There is simply no greater challenge as a disciple of Christ and as a human being than to truly forgive from the heart those who have hurt us, which is why so many in the world today are weighed down with the baggage of bitterness and resentment. Because again, to truly forgive someone from the heart is the greatest challenge we will ever face as people of God and members of the human family. And yet it's one of our most essential obligations as followers of Christ and as children of the Father, and one of the things that makes us most like God. And through my own struggle with resentments, the Lord has taught me a few things about forgiveness, things that have really helped me in my struggle to truly, to, to truly forgive others from the heart. The first thing is to be aware that anger and resentment are very natural reactions to being wronged or harmed. When someone has committed some injustice against us and we get angry about it, in a sense that is a good thing because our feelings are telling us that something is wrong and that the way this person has treated us is not right. For this reason, when there's an injustice done against us, it is a good and necessary thing to address it. Simply because we are called to be peacemakers and we are not called to be doormats. But we are called to address the wrong done to us in a spirit of charity and with the ultimate goal of reconciliation in mind. And so when we're feeling angry and, re and resentful about something that someone has done to us, it's best to pay attention to those feelings and not to ignore them and to address the situation that may have caused us to feel that way. Because feelings are not wrong in and of themselves. It's what we do with them that constitutes matters of right or wrong. And so our feelings of anger may be perfectly justified, but how we address these feelings of anger is what God calls us to pay close attention to. Second, forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be best friends with the person you have forgiven, or that you are expected to even like them. Forgiveness simply means that you don't wish the person who has wronged you any harm, that you desire hope and even pray for their well-being, and that you're not holding on to any bitterness or resentment towards them. Sometimes it's actually good and necessary to have some healthy distance from someone who has hurt us in order to facilitate the process of healing and forgiveness. Third, because forgiveness is an exceptionally difficult thing to do and not something that comes naturally to most of us, we shouldn't beat ourselves up about it when it doesn't come easy for us and when it doesn't happen overnight. It comes very naturally to God, of course, but for the human community, our keen sense of justice can make it very difficult to truly forgive someone from the heart. This is why forgiveness takes much time and effort and why it's only with God's help that true forgiveness is even remotely possible. Fourth, prayer is our greatest weapon against resentment and forgiveness. And not just any kind of prayer, but persistent prayer. Because through persistent prayer, we rely on God's intervention God's grace and God's help for this monumental task and not our own willpower. It may take months or even years, but by continually going to God in prayer for the grace and the strength to forgive, we open up ourselves to the divine power that is truly necessary to forgive. There are many times I've had to force myself to pray for the person I resent, and other times I've had to admit to myself and to God that I don't even want to forgive this person. And so I've had to pray simply for the desire to forgive. In other words, I've had to ask God for the grace to simply want to forgive. But even a prayer like that, asking God for the desire to forgive is pleasing to him and a great place to start on the road to forgiveness because it means that we are open to the possibility of being able to forgive. Because more than anything else God wants from us or expects of us, he wants us to forgive those who have wronged us. I'll repeat that. More than anything else that God wants from us or expects from us, he wants us to forgive those who have wronged us. And he will always provide divine assistance to those who are truly open to doing so. 
And finally, one of the most important things I've learned through my own struggle to forgive others is that forgiveness is really an act of the will and not so much an emotion. In other words, we can make the decision to forgive others even if we don't yet feel that forgiveness in our hearts. Because again, forgiveness is a decision, not an emotion. But when, we, but when we make an act of the will and we make the decision to forgive others, despite how we still feel towards them, our emotions will eventually catch up. Again, it may take months or even years, but as long as we continue to make the decision to forgive, our feelings will eventually catch up with our act of will and with our decision to forgive others. And this decision to forgive will have to be made repeatedly, sometimes even daily, because forgiveness is almost always a work in progress, one that takes much time, much prayer, and much intentionality. And this is because, and this is because we're sim this is simply because we're not robots who have perfect control over our emotions and who can manufacture feelings of forgiveness instantaneously. And making the decision to forgive and making an act of the will is as simple as praying something like this. Lord, Lord, right now I feel nothing but hurt, anger, and resentment towards this person. But I choose to surrender these emotions to you and to forgive them in your name. Or praying something like this, Lord, I really don't want to forgive this person, but I want to want to forgive them. And in your name, I ask for the desire to forgive. Or praying something like this, Lord, I don't like this person. In fact, I feel nothing but hatred for them. But I offer up this prayer for their well-being and for their greatest good. Prayers such as these are very powerful because they represent an act of the will and because they come from a place far beyond our emotions, a place of choosing to do the right thing and to do God's will even when it doesn't feel good. There's countless times I've had to force myself to say prayers such as these and to pray for others even when I didn't feel like forgiving them, even when I still felt nothing but contempt for them. But the more I did so, the better I felt. And the more I did so, the more I was able to let go of my hurt, my anger, and my resentment, and was then able to eventually, and was then able to eventually forgive them from the heart as well. Because again, forgiveness is almost always a work in progress, one that takes much time, much prayer, and much intentionality. And God honors such prayers because he knows that to truly forgive from the heart is far beyond our ability as human beings. That to truly forgive from the heart takes divine intervention and divine assistance. But he's always ready to give the power of his spirit to those who seek and those who desire the grace to truly forgive. A powerful example of a true life story about forgiveness is one I've talked about before. It involves the sentence hearings of the man responsible for the horrific bus crash in 2018 that killed 16 people from the small town of Humboldt, Saskatchewan. The driver of the, tr the, driver of the truck that crashed into the bus, Jaskirat Sadu, pleaded guilty to all charges. And at his sentence hearing, all the families affected by this horrendous tragedy read their various victim impact statements. Most of the families understandably have trouble letting go of the anger and resentment they feel towards Sidhu for causing the death and injury of their loved ones. But there's one family, the Thomases, where you can clearly see the power of forgiveness at work. Scott and Lori Thomas had lost their only son, Evan, to the tragic accident of 2018. The day, after they had read their agonizing, the day after they had read their agonizing victim impact statement, they couldn't shake a haunting feeling that the son that they, the son that they had lost would have forgiven the truck driver responsible for the accident. So they wrote a letter addressed to Sidhu himself, extending their forgiveness for what happened. They included with the letter a hockey pendant that belonged to their deceased son, having decided to give the pendant to the man responsible for their son's death. Sidhu received both the letter and the pendant, and shortly afterwards 
relatives of Sidhu were able to arrange a meeting between him and the Thomases. During this emotional meeting, Evan's father, Scott Thomas, and Sidhu tearfully embraced. And Scott once again offered forgiveness to Sidhu. Sidhu took out the hockey pendant he had received from the Thomases, the one that belonged to their deceased son, and he said to them, I will wear this for the rest of my life. As remarkable as this story is, this kind of radical forgiveness is very possible with the help of our Lord, for it's only Jesus himself who can love and forgive in this radical way and who gives us the grace to do the same. And so on this, the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the Lord invites us to bring all our resentments to him and to let them go because forgiveness blesses us more than it blesses the one being forgiven, just as resentments hurt us more than, the, than they hurt the one we resent. And because forgiveness has awesome spiritual power, power to turn our lives around, power to fill our hearts with joy, love, and gratitude, power to free us from the burdens and the baggage of the past, and power to heal all our, all our emotional, spiritual, and even our physical wounds. Amen. Now let us stand and profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United as one family with faith and confidence, we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father as we pray, loving God, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Spirit may lead all to deeper conversion and greater obedience to God's commands, we pray. That God's mercy and refuge may surround countries and communities torn by war and violence, we pray. For the lives which have been lost due to hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and fires, especially in Morocco and Libya, and for the spiritual and economic recovery of the communities and individuals affected, we pray. For our parish of Blessed Frederick Osnum, that our community will continue to grow and thrive, both spiritually and physically, bringing to fruition our mission to build our new church in which to offer glory and praise to God. We pray for the sick, that the healing presence of God be revealed to them to the care of others. We pray for those who have passed on from this life, that they may be granted eternal life in Christ, we pray. Loving Father, listen to the prayers of your faithful and instill in us the ways of forgiveness. 
so that we may reach out in love to all people. We entrust all our needs and intentions to you through our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children are scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity may the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts. We have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse with their blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Frederick Ozenam and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
few announcements. So uh, from our bake sale, we made uh, almost $3,000. Woo! And I'm only responsible for about half of that, so yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, okay. <laughs> uh, gala tickets are on sale as usual after mass this weekend, after all masses this weekend. Uh, also, after mass, the Knights of Columbus membership drive, uh, the Knights of Columbus are having a membership drive. Uh, some of you heard them speak at the beginning of mass, so will be there to answer any of your questions. Uh, so we encourage men 18 and over to consider joining this very uh, special uh, fraternity. So once again, that's after Mass. Uh, the Knights of Columbus membership drive is happening. Uh, we're doing a, a protest, uh, sorry, um, a pro-life protest. Uh, it's more like a, um, a, it's a peaceful protest. Uh, we do this every year, the first weekend in October. So it'll be October 1st this year on Sunday. It'll happen at what? 1.30 p.m. till 2.30 p.m. It takes place at the uh, corner of 16th and uh, Markham Road. And uh, it's just very prayerful and peaceful just to uh, raise people's consciousness about pro-life issues. And uh, yeah, so you're invited to join us for that. Uh, the St. Vincent de Paul is holding a harvest food collection next weekend, so they'll be collecting all sorts of food. Uh, things like vegetables and fruit, things that I'm not really interested in, so, um, but, <laughs> but food that is much needed for people that are in need. And so we encourage you to uh, take a look at the bulletin and see what kinds of food uh, that they need. So that's next weekend. It's things like apples, melons, and I think different uh, uh, sort of uh, fruits and vegetables. So that's next weekend. Um, the, Ar the Archdiocese has started an earthquake relief fund for the Moroccan situation. Um, to find out more how you can support this very worthy cause, you can visit their website at archtoronto.org. Um, we're also accepting, uh, it's not in the bulletin unfortunately because we, we got the notice kind of late about it, but it'll be in next week's bulletin. There'll be more information about the different ways you can support this. Uh, one of the ways is to write a check, uh, you can write a check to us uh, so you put Blessed Frederick, Blessed Ozanam Parish on the check, Morocco Earthquake Humanitarian Relief, and we'll make sure that it gets to the Archdiocese uh, for their uh, relief fund. And I think that's it. Please stand for the closing prayer. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go forth now in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Hope you have all a very blessed remainder of the weekend, and hope to see you again real soon. God bless. <laughs>